Hello and welcome back to our craft grab and go kits. Today we are going to be making a cardboard car um, with, with a rubber band and using the rubber band to create tension and make the wheels uh, spin on their own. Um, so if you picked up your grab and go kit you will have gotten um, a bag with uh, one piece of cardboard um, eight and a half by nine inches uh, four um, circular pieces of cardboard that were used cutting it with this uh, CD disc um, to cut out with a cir circle uh, made in the middle, um, two, um, two skewers, and uh, three rubber bands, and um, one straw. Um, so other materials that you're going to need uh, would be, let's see, a pair of scissors are going to be good, a pencil, ruler, um, extra skewers if you have them, um, a, um, a, 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 a paper clip, and uh, glue. I'm going to be using um, uh, hot melt glue for this because I need something that melts quickly for the video. However, if you don't have hot melt glue, you could use a craft glue or Elmer's glue. Uh, there will be times when you're going to need some extra tape to kind of tape things closed while you're waiting for it to dry though. Um, but you can, you will be able to use that and I'll explain um, at different times when to add a uh, piece of tape to help you to help things dry out. Uh, you'll also need a circular um, um, spice container um, and you'll see what that is in the video. Um, so I hope you have fun making this project and I hope that you uh, share with us what you've made in the future. So to get started we are going to make the chassis or the body of our car. We're going to use the square piece of cardboard that's eight and a half by nine inches. We're also going to use a the cylinder spice container. So look at your cardboard. You'll see that there's some ribs or lines along one of the sides, so feel it and look at it. Uh, what you are going to want to do is fold the cardboard or roll the cardboard along these lines and not against it. That's going to make it much easier. So to get started, kind of just start to slowly fold a little bit. So as you can see on mine I have a few lines that are fairly straight because I folded along those ribs, th those lines that are um, in the cardboard itself. So now I'm going to add the spice container and I'm going to roll around it as tightly as I can. Slowly you'll feel the cardboard kind of breaking as it goes along. So now I have my, the shape of my chassis, so now we can put the, um, take out the spice container. So now we're going to work on, uh, on gluing this. You're going to want to use some tape. Um, so we're going to roll this, glue this, and tape it to hold it uh, for the glue. So break off a couple good sized pieces of tape. Um, this is especially important if you're using um, regular craft glues. Like I said, I'm using quick drying uh, glue, but I still want to use tape. So if you're going to use regular craft, craft glue, definitely get a few pieces of tape to hold your the cylinder while the, 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 the paint while the glue is drying. Or you can use a rubber band if you have like a large rubber band or a very strong rubber band, you can use that. Um, to hold the, the, the cylinder. So I'm going to now mark it with a pencil. I'm going to roll it up and now mark it so I know where I want the glue to go to start off with. So I'm going to want the glue within this space here between the pencil mark and the edge. So I'm going to start to glue. I'm going to slowly glue uh, piece by piece. If you're using craft glue, you can glue the entire thing at once and just uh, roll it closed and tape it to, to keep it shut. But since I'm using quick drying glue, I'm going to do this incrementally, li like little by little. Um, otherwise, the glue will dry before I have a chance to, to close it all the way. So once I've got my first area glued, I'm going to use my tape to, to hold it shut. And I'm just going to continue moving along, uh, glue, adding the glue. Once I've got another area done, I'm going to, once again, tape it shut. 
And then I'm just going to finish off with the, the last bit of the glue, the last bit of the, the, the cardboard. I'm going to glue that down. And get some extra glue towards the ends because those would be the areas that come up the, the easiest. This part I'm just going to hold closed until it dries. Like I said, this is quick drying glue, so it'll dry in a couple seconds, and then I can start removing the tape now that it's all dry. And, uh, and there's my chassis. I just have to clean off the cobwebs from the old glue. So there it is. I have a round cylinder that I'm going to work with as the body of my car. Okay, so next we are going to add the wheels. So we're going to take our wooden skewers, take one that has a nice pointy tip to it, um, and the idea is that we are going to poke this through, um, set it uh, right along in the middle of the, of the diameter of the chassis, uh, so that it goes right along the diameter. I don't want it to be too high or low or off to the side. I want to try to the best I can to get it to go straight through the middle along the diameter. So to do this, I'm going to look along the sides and pick a, pick a couple sides that look like I'll be able to poke something through evenly on. And I'm just going to make um, marks with the pencil um, right ar around the middle between those two lines, those two ribs that, that we folded it along. I'm just going to mark in the middle and then I'm going to use the uh, the ruler to measure about three quarters of an inch to an inch off the end. Then I'm going to go to the other end, working only on the same side. I'm going to mark the middle, and again, mark a little, make a little mark about three quarters to an inch. Um, it's just got to be enough so that the wheels uh, have plenty of room so that they don't uh, touch each other. So I'm going to make two marks uh, where I'm going to poke the, the skewer through. So there you can see that, just about see the marks that I've made. The lighting's not too great on this. So now I'm going to take my skewer and I'm going to work it through. If you don't have a good skewer, you can use a sharp scissor, but I'm going to slowly work it through. What I don't want to do is stab it. I don't want to stab it or jam it through. I want to slowly spin it and, and work it through and it should poke the hole in there. So as you can see now, I have the skewer, so now I'm going to make a mark on the other side where I want it to go through. Again, I want it to go through the middle, not too high or low or off to the side. I want it to get to go through as evenly as possible. And again, I'm just going to slowly work it through, spinning it um, and, and pushing it through the cardboard until it comes through the other side. And there you have it. So that's what one of them is going to look like. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Slowly working the skewer through, pushing it through so that I get the nice line. Now what I really want to do with these two is make sure that they're both even with each other. So it's not so much to get it through the middle, but I, uh, the diameter, but I want to make sure that they're like parallel and on the same plane with each other because this is what the wheels are going to go on if it's on different angles or whatever, it's the, the wheels are going to be all uneven. So try as eyeball it as best as you can to get to get it to go right through so that they're dead on even with each other. And then again poke it through the other eye, side, slowly working it through and all right, there you go. Now you can pull out your skewers. Next you're going to take a pencil. So now with your pencil, you're going to open these holes made by the skewers um, just enough uh, so that you can fit the straw into that hole. You don't want it to go too wide, so don't push the pencil all the way through. If you do that, the, the, the straw is going to go through just enough to get the straw to fit in snugly. So push the pencil in a little bit, test out the straw, and keep, keep going with that. And once I've got about where I want the straw to be, I'm just going to kind of wiggle the pencil around uh, just to open up the hole just a little bit more 
uh, so that my pencil fits and then I'll do the same thing on for each of the four holes. All right, so now that you've got your four holes for your straw to fit into, what we're going to do is cut the straw down so that we have four pieces to stick inside each one. So measure, I'm gonna overcut this, but all you need is about half inch to maybe an inch. I'm cutting mine a little bit long because I wanna play with it and do something different with my car to see how it works. But cut four pieces of straw, a half inch to three quarters of an inch. And then you can just use each piece that you cut to measure where you want the next cut to be. Just uh, be careful when you're cutting because the straw will fly out of your hands as you're doing this. And just save the last bit of straw in case you need it. So now set each of them into the hole that you made for them. Just, to, just let it go through a little bit. It doesn't need to go all the way through. You want some coming out of the each end, just like that. But as you can see, that's not very even. So if I try to spin a wheel on that, it's not gonna to go too well. So as I'm gluing these down, I'm going to have to try to even, even these out. I'm just gonna widen the holes a little bit just so that I can, to give me a little bit more play so that it's not so difficult to, to maneuver them to make them nice and even when I start gluing them. So they're still not looking good, but I'm gonna work with it. But do the same with the other two just to get all four of those in. Now I'm going to take a, take skewers and I'm going to poke those through the straws so that it goes between both straws. This is what your wheel is going to spin on so make sure that your skewer spins. As you can see with mine they're not too even so the skewer is not going to spin too well. That's what I need to even them out uh, to make them one straight line so that the skewer spins even uh, easily. Now I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to glue these in. So since I'm using a fast drying glue, I don't need tape with this. But if you're using a slower drying glue, just add some thicker glue like an Elmer's glue. Don't use something like a, um, a, a instant glue, um, a super glue type thing. Uh, use like a thicker Elmer's glue and then just add some tape around it to help hold it in place. But right now I'm just going to kind of glue it and hold it with my fingers for a couple seconds to try to get it nice and uh, nice and even. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. And just uh, just fix up around to, just to make sure that you get glue around all all around it. Um, so with mine, I'm going to just use a little bit of tape just to help hold it into place uh, because it is a little bit um, because mine are a little bit off. The glue will help, or the tape will help hold it in place as the the glue dries a little better. And if you have good enough tape, you can even just keep that keep that on there, and that should help hold it. If you need to pull it back a little bit, that'll help keep it down, keep it in place. And just test to make sure that your skewer spins. If it has trouble spinning or you feel like it's touching any of the um, straw, you know, uh, make some adjustments with your straw. Once you have one through, then you can start on the other side. So next we're gonna work on the wheels. So you're going to take your four circles. You'll see that there's a circle drawn in the, the center of it. So you're just going to mark an X with your pencil in the middle of each of these just to get the uh, an idea of where the very center is. 
If you did not pick up a grab and go kit, then you can cut these out using a CD or DVD. Um, just cut the perimeter with a CD and draw the, um, the circle in the middle and then um, to give yourself an idea where the center is. And then um, you just draw the X in, in, in the middle of each one. Now you're gonna take a skewer and you're just gonna poke it right through that X to get it right in the middle and just start working your way through. This might be difficult, um, so just keep working at it. If you um, want, you can switch and use a, a scissor or maybe an X-Acto knife, but the skewer should make it through. Um, if you do have a problem like I'm having with this one, then just change to a different skewer, uh, but you'll, and just do that for each, each wheel. So now you should have a hole in the center of each circle like that, each of your wheels, uh, big enough to fit the skewer through. So now <clears throat> we're going to take our chassis, um, just test to make sure that your skewer goes through the two um, uh, straws. Um, and now what you're going to do is you're going to attach your wheels. So I'm going to put the skewer through this wheel here, and then I'm going to start feeding it through between the straws. that the skewer comes out the other side, then I'll add the other wheel. Now what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the skewer in the middle and I'm trying to get the two wheels even and touching the straws. I don't want the wheels at an angle of any sort. Um, I want to try to make them like nice and even with and parallel or perpendicular to parallel to the, the chassis. Otherwise, if they're, if they're not, they're going to wobble a lot and I don't want that. So just work and try to get them, eyeball them to get them as, as close as you can to, to being even and, and parallel to your to the chassis, to the body of it. And you only want a little bit of the stick hanging off on the side there. All right, so now I'm gonna take some glue. So um, like I said, I'm using the hot glue because it dries quickly. So I'm gonna put uh, some glue around the spindle um, so that the to, to glue the, the wheels in place. If you're using Elmer's glue, then glue it and then add some, some duct tape or something, like cut some duct tape into thinner strips and add the duct tape on there to, to hold it in place. Do not glue it to the straw. You do not want to glue this to the straw. You want it to spin with the spindle because that's what's going to spin as we, as, to make the, the wheel spin. And as you're gluing, just make sure that the, the wheels are parallel to the, the, the body, the chassis. You can blow on it a little bit if you're using hot milk glue just to get it to dry quicker, but try to hold it in place as best as you can. Then glue the other wheel on. Getting glue all around uh, so that it's really nicely attached to the to the the, the the to the spindle there. So it should look something like that. And I have you can see that I have a good length of spindle still sticking out the one side there. But I've got a good amount of glue, a nice glob of glue on on each side there. I just want to make sure that I get it all even and that I get a, a good amount of glue so that it's, it's really attached there. So now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut off this spindle. Um, I should have done this before I glued them. Um, and I should have also grabbed a pair of wire cutters or something stronger. So if you do have something better, then grab that. Just be careful when you cut this because spindles tend to fly off like little darts. Um, so make sure that you don't hit anybody with that. And as you can see, mine rolls. See, look at that. So I'm, I'm almost there. And I've got a lot of cobwebs from all this hot melt glue because it's, it's messy like that. So now I'm going to do the other way, do the other, the other wheels uh, the same way that I did this one. Sticking the spindle through one of them. And then feeding it through between the two straws. I'm just going to push this all the way to the end so I don't have to do too much adjusting later. 
I'm gonna feed it through and then grab the other wheel and add it on. So this is gonna be more difficult because it's already got some wheels on, so I can't just stand it up on the end. So I'm gonna to have to kind of eyeball it while it's uh, standing up and hope that it, the wheels don't get too messed up. And then just start adding some glue here. So next you're going to take one of the tips that you had cut off from the, uh, the sides, the, the, the skewer tip from the sides of the wheels, um, and we're going to add this to the front. So we have to choose now which is going to be the top of our car and which is going to be the bottom. So I'm going to put that extra fold of cardboard along the bottom side. Then I'm going to choose which side is going to be the front and the back. Now if you look at your cardboard, you should see small little grooves or openings that you can easily slide the skewer into. So you're going to put that into the top of your top front of your car and just slide it in so that it's sticking out about a half an inch. You can, if you want, dab it with a little bit of glue uh, to hold it in place. Um, or if you don't have glue or you don't want to wait for it to dry, you can take some um, some duct tape, just uh, uh, rip it in half so that it's a very thin piece of duct tape. And you can use this to to secure uh, to secure this onto the front of your car. So this is an important part. This is going to we're going to start working with the rubber bands to create the tension, and this is what the rubber bands are going to hook onto um, to to create the tension to uh, to make our wind up car uh, start to go. So when you're done, it should look something like this. All right, so we're almost done. Now we're going to need to take our rubber bands, and we're going to have to tie these rubber bands together. Um, I got a little bit of glue on mine, so I just have to clean that off. So uh, just watch closely. We're going to hold the rubber bands. We're going to put the rubber band um, through one of them, and then grabbing one end of the rubber band, we're going to loop it through the other side and pull. Just like that, so we got a nice little knot between two of the rubber bands. Now we're going to do the same exact thing with the third. I'm going to show you again. If you need to, hit pause, rewind. Um, it's, it's a fairly simple knot. So you're going to take one end and pull it through the other side so that you have three rubber bands linking together. So this is the easy part. <laughs> now you're simply going to hook that over, uh, that the edge of the skewer off the, the front of your, um, of your car. And... Now comes the hard part. You're going to have to try to drop it through uh, the, the rest of your car um, along the top side of your, of your vehicle. Um, it's good to have a, um, a paper clip on hand that you unwound a little bit. I'm having a little trouble with mine. Mine got a little um, uh, uh, twisted up. So again, I'm going to try to loop it over and then drop it through uh, the car. Um, this should be long enough that you should be able to grab it. If not, then use a paper clip to grab it. So now comes the really hard part. We're now going to have to loop this around the back, um, that, that back wheel, the, or the, the, the skewer between the wheels there. So I'm going to keep it wide, and I'm going to try to wrap the, the end of the rubber band around the tire, like up and over and then through so that I can hold it so that it's wrapped around and then yeah I'm gonna have to it's tough to to do this because it's on wheels now and wheels start to roll um, so I'm gonna try to hook it wrap it over and through I'll, I'll show you with the camera in, in just a second so that you have a slightly better view of what this might look like I'm just gonna get a little bit of light here for you so that you can see hold on a second So now you can sort of see how it's how it's looped around. So now I can start to tighten. So I so so yeah. So I, I widened it and then I um, 
uh, looped around the, the end of the rubber band so it went through itself. So now as I tighten it, it's going to start to wrap around that the, the skewer at the at the back side there. Um, after once it's wrapped a couple times, you don't have to hold on to the end of the rubber band. But once you let go, you see that the wheels start to spin, and that's what's going to give us um, our go. That's the tension um, that we're using to, uh, to to make our wheels go. Um, so test it out, try it out a couple times to make sure that you've got it. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, uh, just make sure that your fingers can can fit through there. If again, if you need to, you can use a, uh, a, a um, an unraveled paper clip to do this. But if you use three um, rubber bands, you should have enough. So as you can see, my my rubber band is coming around the back. It's hard to balance this with light. Um, so the rubber band's coming around the back. I'm going to wrap one end over. If only I had see-through fingers, you would see this. So I'm wrapping one end over and, or, and under and around so it goes between the rubber bands. And I'm going to grab that end and then I can start tying the uh, or, or tightening the wheels, tightening it on the wheels again. And, and once again, if you can get, sort of see it, once you, um, once I tighten or, or, or wrap it around a couple of times, I can let it go. I don't have to hold the end of the rubber band anymore. I can just let it go and keep tightening the wheels as much as I'd like to. And when you're ready, let it go. It's best to do this on carpet, not on linoleum tiles like I did because you get a little bit more um, grab with the carpet. All right, so there it is. There's our uh, tension powered uh, cardboard car. Um, I hope you had fun making this. Um, and please share any videos or pictures that you uh, of your projects that you've made. Uh, we'd love to see what you what you've made. Um, and I'll see you in a couple weeks with another uh, craft kit.